Hi, it's Darren from Little Athletics New South Wales here today to show you how we can introduce hurdles to young athletes in a fun, effective and safe way. We're going to go through some progressive activities that you can use to introduce the skills. We'll talk a little bit about safety and also some of the key rules. When introducing hurdles to young athletes, you might like to use cones, mini hurdles, modified larger hurdles, pool noodles and pegs. Some key hurdles rules that you need to know about when you're teaching kids. Number one, you're not permitted to deliberately knock down a hurdle with your hands or feet. Number two, you must clear your own hurdle. Some things you might wanna think about when it comes to safety. Number one, make sure that you've got a stable, non-slippery hurdle surface. Also, try to use modified hurdles when you are introducing the event. Also, make sure that kids, when they're hurdling, don't approach the hurdle from the, the wrong direction. In little athletics, hurdles are made to fall down in a certain way, and if you hurdle them from the wrong direction, they're not going to fall over for you. Finally, a progressive introduction of the skill is important. When introducing hurdles to kids, it's useful to use progressions. The first thing that I like to do is place low objects or mini hurdles on the ground at random spaces and ask the kids to run over those objects without slowing, hesitating or stutter stepping. The next thing that you might like to do is move those low objects to the correct hurdle distances. That then gets the kids running over the hurdles without hesitating with the objects at the hurdle distance they will be using when they are racing at Little Athletics. The next step is getting the child to run over low hurdles, getting the knees up to the front and getting the feet down on the ground quickly. It's not too important at this stage that they are using a correct hurdling technique other than getting those knees to the front. Now, what I mean by getting the knees to the front is both knees are coming up and facing forward as they go over the hurdle. Feet down quickly on the ground means the feet are hitting the ground in quick succession so that they can then run on quickly to the next hurdle. Once the kids have got the idea of getting that lead leg up to the front with their knee pointing forward, we can start to introduce a bit of a trail leg that allows the child to go a little bit lower over the hurdles. Now the trail leg is a little bit more complex than the lead leg. It requires the child to get their leg up to the side with their heel close to their bottom. They then move the leg so that the knee comes around to the front before they put it back down on the track. This can be practiced by stepping over hurdles at a slower pace and then slowly increasing that pace as they become more proficient with the skill. Eventually, you can get them to step over the hurdle and run away from the hurdle, trying to use that correct trail leg technique. So once the kids have got a basic lead and trail leg technique, you can work on things like running to a hurdle and then clearing that hurdle and running away from the hurdle, putting the whole skill together. Now, some of the key common errors that you might like to look for when kids are learning hurdles and that you should be prepared for with some solutions are, number one, kids often, when they're approaching a hurdle, take small, stuttering, hesitating steps. So if this occurs, one thing that you might like to do is go back to using the lower hurdles so that the kids can more confidently approach those hurdles and run fast at them and get over them a lot more easily. Mistake number two, when kids go over hurdles, they're supposed to keep their trail leg tucked up in near them. Now, beginners will often sweep that trail leg wide. Now, what this does, it makes their hurdling a little bit awkward and slows them down, but it may also infringe the rules where their leg goes over the hurdle next to them. What you can do to solve this problem is narrow the space in which they've got to work. Pool noodles are fantastic for this peg a pool noodle in on either side of the hurdle and that narrows the space in which they, they can hurdle. And if they do happen to swing their trail leg too wide, they will touch that pool noodle and it will give them feedback to try and correct that action. Common mistake number three when it comes to hurdling. Now, even though it's okay in the early stages of learning and over the lower hurdles for kids to tuck their leg up underneath them, to do a good trail leg, that leg needs to be tucked up to the side so that the child can go low over the hurdles. Now, if they tuck their leg underneath them when the hurdles are higher, it means they have to jump too high to get over the hurdle, taking them too long to get over that hurdle, or they might clip the hurdle as they go over it, which will interrupt their hurdling action and may even cause them to stumble. 
Now this jumping over a hurdle too high problem, it's worthwhile going back to rehearsing that trail leg again at a slow pace so that they just get in the groove of learning what that correct action is. Now common mistake number four is that kids will do a trail leg that isn't fully completed. Now ideally when kids hurdle, what they should do after they've done the trail leg, they bring their knee round to the front so that they can then leave the hurdle and continue sprinting. If they don't do this, if they try to bring their leg back down onto the ground before they've fully completed the trail leg and got their knee around the front, it can cause them to stumble and wobble when they land and leave that hurdle. Again, this is just a matter of rehearsing the correct trail leg action, maybe walking and practicing running away from the hurdle. Get them to bring their leg right around to the front and maybe even point at a target that is in front of them before they put their knee back down on the ground. Common mistake number five in hurdling. When hurdling, kids should ideally clear the hurdle and then continue in an uninterrupted run towards the next hurdle. A lot of kids will clear the hurdle, stop, prop, and then continue their run, which of course is going to slow them down. To fix this problem, go back to some of those earlier drills done at a slow pace, where the kids can be thinking about what they're doing and get in the, to the correct movement, where they put their foot down and continue running to the next hurdle. There's some hurdles ideas for you that you can use to introduce hurdles to young athletes. Remember, hurdles is not a jumping event. It's a running event where we have to teach the kids to continue running in an uninterrupted movement over objects. Hope that's helped today. Enjoy coaching hurdles.